tied the network, but we're gonna try to use a domain name in our project, which is my domain, externally, so we can send email outside the network. Sending email outside just mean uh, sending to Yahoo, Hotmail, whatever email. But this is gonna be in one of the projects. Because all we're gonna share in this domain. Okay? Let's start with introduction to Windows Server architecture, how it works. And before we start with Windows, uh, with HCM Server 2003, we wanna start with overview about the relation between Exchange 2003 and Active Directory and Domain Controller. As we know, in a domain environment, we have Windows 2003 Active Directory. As we can have Windows Server Active Directory, <coughs> Exchange need Active Directory. Why? Because most of the user information is in an Active Directory. Yes? User information is in Active Directory. Exchange use all the information from Active Directory to get the user information. And we have a tool in Windows Server also as in Exchange Windows 2003. We use it to create the user. Which means every time you need to create an email account or a new user, we don't need to use Active Directory. We have another tool which we install it with Exchange 2003 and this is the use we're going to use most of the time to create a new user or to create email account for an existing user or to create a mailbox for a new user or an existing user. So the idea is there is a relation between Exchange Windows 2003 and Active Directory in Windows Server 2003. They build together. Exchange cannot work without Active Directory. Exchange need Active Directory. Exchange need also DNS. And this is the most important server, two server for Exchange. So Exchange need DNS and need the domain environment. Exchange use these two servers for communication, for internal communication. Next step, we're going to talk about external communication. For example, let's assume you have a router. You have to configure the router to allow Exchange to send the mail outside. Or if you have a firewall, you have to open a port for Exchange to send the email outside or to accept email outside. And we're going to take example of that. As we know, firewall block all the port. Exchange used two very common protocols, POP3 and SMTP. Exchange used POP3 for receiving mail and SMTP for sending me. We're going to come to this presentation here. Let me start and we're going to watch this presentation later, okay? This is just an example for Windows Server 2003 administrative mode. We have different model which we can use it. The first one is centralized model and the other one is decentralized. Centralized means we have both server in one location. Decentralized means we have exchange server in different location. You understand what I mean? For example here, when we are, we are talking about centralized, we have a client in our network and we have external server. External server for example like msn.com or for example American Online. Com. And this is just an example XP client. Let's take a look how we are receiving mail and how we are sending mail. Okay? Receiving mail, first of all, let's assume you are receiving mail from external server. What happened that the external server sent the email to your exchange? The email is stored in your exchange. And after the email stored in Exchange, Outlook client or your client software, which mostly is Outlook, pull down or download your email from the mail server. It's the same way when you want to send the email. You send your email to the server first, then the server take and send it to the external mail 
server. Of course, between the internal mail server, which is your business mail server, and the external mail server, there is some type of server here. This type of server can be a router or can be a firewall. Can be a router or can be a fire. And in most cases, ladies and gentlemen, we are using a firewall. We can't use only router, or in most of the case, we are using both router and firewall. By using both here, you have, we have to set the firewall to allow. What kind of communication we have to allow? We have to allow incoming communication and outgoing communication. What do we mean by that? We mean by that that your mail server has to receive mail, yes? At the same time, have to send also mail. This is what we mean by external communication between mail server and mail server. This is mail server and this is mail server. As we have mail to mail server communication, we have mail to client communication. The client communicate with the mail server to download the email or to send the email. This is just an example if we are using centralized is it possible to use another module which is decentralized? Yes. Yes. One of the email server can get the email from the external server, external mail server, and the email starts synchronizing with each other. Now what we are talking about synchronization between the email. Synchronization between the email server. If one of the emails got from external mail server any email, after a specific time, the server starts synchronizing with other servers, the server starts updating each other. Do you remember synchronizing with the domain controller? How the domain controller replication with each other? Yes. Replicate the data, whatever update we have, with mail server is the same. This is one way of communication. Can we have different way of communication? Based exactly what is your business environment. Is your business environment all within one domain? As we can see, it can be with one domain. Yes, it can be with one domain, but we have different location, different site, and this is what we call it site. So we have to configure the server or the mail server to synchronize to another site. Also between the site, we have a firewall, because each site have as an external server or to connect to external world, we have a firewall. We have to configure the firewall. The same way we have to configure here, we have to configure here. Okay? This is just the beginning of exchange server. And something else, whenever we start with centralizing model, most of the server or all the server are installed in a single administrative group. When we have a centralized, we have one administrative group or single administrative group. What is administrative group? We're going to cover later on more in details. If we are in the centralized server are installed in a separate administrative group. And this is one of the change we have it right now in Exchange 2007. There is a lot of difference between 2003 and Exchange 2007. There is more option, more future, more security, more enhancement in Exchange 2007. In Exchange 2007, ladies and gentlemen, we have two versions. We have 32-bit version and 64-bit version. Of course, the design of Exchange Server 2007 is a little bit different than 2003. But if we under, if we were able to understand 2003, it would be easy for us to understand 2007. <clears throat> Let's see how the message routing in Windows in uh, Exchange Server 2003. As we can see, we have what we call it routing group. Routing group, like we have different branches. We have one branch with Exchange Server, and as we can see, in each branch we have SMTP server. Sometimes we call it SMTP server. Why? A lot of business they are using SMTP server for sending message. At the other branch, also we have a, another routing group, and we have another SMTP server, 
and this is how the message is routed from one group to another group to online SMTP server. What does that mean? If we have any mail information here, it will be synchronized with this one, and this one will synchronize to another what we call it routing group, and the routing group will synchronize to another SMTP. This is just an introduction in general, so we're just trying to understand how it exchange server. 2003 war. I, I know that we don't know, we didn't start talking about routing group yet, we don't know about SMTP yet, but we're going to cover all more in detail later on.